uh, play of the game from way down. One, two, silence. The Rainer getting absolutely a team wipe. The living bombs going. Oh my goodness, the ring. Bob says they go gonna find great. Welcome to this evening's cast. We got more Heroes of the Storm action on Murda once again. And right now, our second half of the doubleheader, we got Reborn Knights Red versus Regen Blue. It's Red versus Blue, but Reborn Knights Red's the home team tonight, so they're going to be the blue side. <clears throat> Go figure. Either way, hey, thanks for being here. Thanks for hanging out. Uh, once again, I am Murda. Welcome to twitch.tv slash MurdaRG. If you're watching on YouTube, make sure you hit that like button. Make sure you hit that subscribe button. Trying to get those subscribers on YouTube up to 100. So if you're hanging out on Twitch right now and you're waiting for this match to begin like I am, head on over to my YouTube page. Help me out. Hit subscribe. It costs you nothing. And it means the world to me would appreciate all the followers you can find there. I do see players online. However, I'm yet to hear from anybody yet, including our captain of Regen Blue, who, those of you might know, Mongoose, good friend of mine, fellow board member with NGS, now a longtime member of Regen. Hey, Arrow, what's up in chat? Murdo, what's up, buddy? Uh, just chilling, man. Uh, thanks for hanging out. Thanks for being here. Appreciate you trying to help me get some cast started today, Arrow, but I was like, wait a minute. I, hold on. Don't I have two? You almost confused me, actually. Like, I was looking at the matches, okay? And I was like, all right, I, I, you know, I could cast that second match. And then I was like, wait a minute, I'm casting Regen Blue. And I saw, I saw it, I was like, okay, I already scheduled a doubleheader. Rip, rip, rip. But we, uh, no mistakes were made. We're here, we're on time. No, I'm on time. You subbed me on YouTube, yay! Thank you, appreciate that. Thank you so much for helping there. Um... Yeah, so we're waiting. I don't know what we're waiting for, who we're waiting on. I am keeping my eye on my friends list and in the in-game chat. Uh, RB. Uh, map? Sure. Uh... I don't know. Literally right now, says Mongoose. Okay. It's coming. It is coming. Uh, looks like the casters got worked out for all the games. Good. Awesome. Glad to hear. Yeah, if you guys missed my earlier match, we had Lion Speed and Team Happy Cloud. Lion Speed Division A took the 2 nothing domination over Team Happy Cloud. You can watch the conclusion of the second half of their doubleheader going on right now. Twitch.tv slash LDZiltoid. I believe I saw that they're going into game number three. <clears throat> so if you're looking for like a good ending to a match, there's one going on right now. Check that one out. Uh, and then, yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll be starting here in a moment. Looks like the lobby was just made. I'm going to try to hop on in and see if it lets me join. I was able to get in. Who are we missing? We're missing one. <clears throat> Jay's on just arriving. Mongoose Larson Grendel. Jason. I think they're waiting on Fox. Might be Fox. Probably. We'll see. Maybe. New follower detected. New follower. There's Fox. He's hitting the follow button on my stream, but he's not yet in the game. Larson as well with the follow. Thank you for those follows, guys. Regen Blue members. Hanging New out here follower comes detected. Fox into the lobby. All right. Uh, I do know what. Well, let me ask. Uh, map fans. Map fans. Oh wait, I just got a message to me. Never mind. All right, map fans. Uh. Okay. Reborn Knights Red banned out Brax's holdout. Regen Blue banned out Towers of Doom. Reborn Knights then banned out Sky Temple. And Regen Blue finished it out with a ban on Battlefield of Eternity. So 
the mongoose not getting the band away Braxis. Go figure. Uh, make sure I write all these down. Braxis. And Sky Temple. This is Div B West 7 22 19. <clears throat> is everyone here? Ready? Telling them I'm ready. I hope they're ready. Map number one will be Tomb of the Spider Queen. One of my favorites, if not the very top of my list. Picked by Reborn Knights Red. So first ban, first pick will belong to Regen Blue. Here come our ready checks from our captains. I think we're going to be hopping into game number one here in just a moment. Just waiting to hear back from Rise and says he's going in five so strap on in let's get ready for game number one our first draft is going to be tomb of the spider queen ladies and gentlemen here we go <laughs> i was trying to delay that as long as possible <laughs> oh, okay we made it arrow says oh my god is blue going to braxis no <laughs> braxis was banned as Jason is reconfirming there in chat. If you missed the bands I said, they once again, Reborn Knights Red band out, Braxis Holdout and Sky Temple, Regen Blue band out, Towers of Doom and Battlefield of Eternity. Here we are, draft number one, Tomb of the Spider Queen. And it's Larson with the Heroes Crown today. 69 bits from Slexia. Uh, Slexia, I gotta say, first off, Congratulations, just made the 1,800 bits donated here on this channel. Thank you very much for every single one of those. Uh, and I saw your message after I was done casting. Apparently my microphone volume was a little weird last game, uh, or last match I should say. Hopefully it's better now. We see my Ev banned out by Regen Blue and Chen banned out by Reborn Knights Red. Hmm. <clears throat> Excuse me. Uh, yeah, it's tough casting two matches in the same night. My voice always goes away after the first one. But I'm gonna try to hold on and hang out as long as we can. Where is my notes on regen? Did I even write it down? Uh, Kael'thas band there. I don't even know. I could have sworn I had some notes on them. Can't find it. Kael'thas, the second band by Regen Blue, back on over to Reborn Knights Red. Ten seconds remain, and they get rid of Alarak. Hmm. Did Regen Blue play in Alarak week one? Not sure. There is Jason Sylvanas. It's actually Larson picking New up. New follower Because Jason detected. plays support this season, of course. It's Jonesy. Thank you for that follow. Uh, yeah, not Jason. Excuse me. Here on the other side is Johanna and Goldan, and on Tomb of the Spider Queen, fantastic picks. Uh, actually saw these heroes plenty of times here before, but I was going to say in my match earlier, but no, actually, the Johanna was banned out in that. Uh, but the Goldan was played earlier on Tomb of the Spider Queen in my match I had at 8.30. He'll make a reappearance here for Reborn Knights Red. Now we're getting some picks from Regen Blue. It's going to be Ana and ETC. They only need three letters for each of these heroes. I don't know how many other heroes in the game only have three letters. Maybe those are the only two. Hmm, thinking. Yep, those are the only two. Slexia dropping the globe says, Go Regen. Let's see if anyone's here from Reborn Knights Red. We'd love to hear support from that crowd. Hanzo banned out by their team. Back on over to Regen Blue with their final ban of Tomb of the Spider Queen. Perhaps want to get rid of a support here. Haven't seen any taken out yet. They have an Ana. Are they worried about the Rhaegar at all who's been formulating himself as a top tier support? Is there something else out there? Uh, or maybe just another damage they don't want to play against? It's gonna be Toronto, and I think this is a fine ban. Alright, good follow up. I wouldn't say it's like necessarily the best support to pair in with what they have so far, just because they don't have any burst damage as of yet. The Goldan 
uh, their main source so far. Warped by a fantastic tool, but now you see they want to pair it in with a Vala, and their support's going to be Ariel. This is a combination of heroes you probably haven't seen too frequently since, oh, Season 4? Maybe Season 5? Uh, but mostly Season 4, where Ariel was somewhat of a beast, Vala was a hyper carry. Uh, but team's starting to try the Vala out a bit more. I'm not exactly sure why yet. <clears throat> uh, did she play that match before? Yeah, she played game one for Team Happy Thought earlier, picked up an L as we see Imperius and Zeratul, the last two selections. I'm just not sold on Vala yet. Uh, I think the Zeratul, a great response by Regen Blue, he's going to be able to hop on that Vala, make sure she's always staying honest in her position. A lot of work ahead for Regen Blue's Fox. And Grendel picking up that Imperius for the soul lane. We should see his matchup right here for stock. It's going to be Thrall. Alright, so Twitch chat, it's that time of the draft where I head on over to you. Time for you to place some votes out there. Hashtag RBKR for Reborn Knights Red or hashtag RGB for Regen Blue. Who are you here rooting for? Who are you here voting for? Throw those hashtags out right now. I will tally them up, let you know what you guys are thinking. Who do I think? Oh man, I don't like answering when there's a regen team out there because it just sounds biased. But if Zeratul can get on top of the Vala, it's going to be easy money for regen blue. But uh, a lot of responsibility in Fox's hands, making sure those engagements are good. Can't play too risky without that wormhole now on Zeratul, so has to be a bit safer than maybe he would have been about a month ago. We'll see if Fox has it in him to help Regen Blue with a victory, or will Reborn Knights Red come out on top here in game number one? Let's find out as we load on into Tomb of the Spider Queen. We got Stamop on the Vala, Danebo playing Johanna, Melkor on Gul'dan, Stock on Thrall. I'm playing support tonight. It's going to be the Captain Rise on Ariel. Ladies and gentlemen, Reborn Knights Red. Over on the right hand side, we got their competitors. Fox on the Zeratul, Mongoose playing ETC, Larson on Sylvanas, Jason playing Ana, and for the solo lane, it will be Grendel on Imperius. Make some noise for Re Gen Blue. Alright, we're gonna join our heroes here at the mid lane as we check out our level one talent Sylvanas going into overwhelming affliction I think a bit safer than we saw our Sylvanas player pull out earlier with the W build loss of hope for Johanna a bit more healing to help out that Mario in case she ever finds herself in trouble but uh, a bit less iron skin and will that cost game bro there's a power slide on him early no body blocks follow in as Eric will take a bit of damage trying to back up I'm trying to re-engage with that iron skin now below 10% health Sylvanas not able to finish the deal 270 the low count on that HP bar and Johanna will survive now up top It's Vala under pressure singularity spike will connect with some supporting there by Ariel and reborn Knights red surviving for now But maybe missing a bit of XP. I didn't see if they got all of that up top. Actually, I guess Vala lost it. Now they make the rotation ahead on the XP ever so slightly Let's tune on into the bottom lane where we see Imperius playing against Thrall, and it's Grendel so far with the lead for Regen Blue, pushing this lane forward, making Thrall use a well tap. You check on in Danebo, making a bit of a risky rotation, getting power slid and slept as Iron Skin starting to back on up. A little bit of hope there for Ariel getting the heal out onto Danebo. Rotations resumed for both of our teams. As the wave's about to crash at mid, Mongoose gonna have to stay behind, make sure they don't miss this soak. The rest of Regem Blue may be in trouble up top. Zeratul surrounded, uses his blink. And is safe back behind the wall. Still no first blood. A minute 45 in. We rounded level 3 here for both our sides. Or maybe uh, 4 rotations around the shoe here. Between top and mid. As there's a big battle going down. Bottom and Pierce with the spear. Not enough auto attack damage. Here comes Vala. And this should be first blood of the game. Oh, missing the W though. Grendel barely surviving and will fall. First blood belonging to Reborn Knights Red. Stamok with the rotation to gank. And a few gems dropped there for Regen Blue. As there's a five gem lead right now for Reborn Knights Red. 
Rainbow grabbing a few more. Continuing this rotation as now you see Regem Blue starting to suffer as EPC had to make the rotation to cover down bottom for Imperius. Uh, there's Vala working on this siege camp and Stamop uncontested able to steal that away under the nose of ETC. Checking down in on your votes during our draft. Just one lonely vote from Arrow. And of course, he's placing his vote on Regen Blue. We'll see if more people show up for our Game 2 draft. I'll ask you for some more votes then. I think that was a possession at mid from Sylvana. Yeah, there is a possession at 4. Vala going into this Hatred build. Getting Creed of the Hunter at level 4. The under pressure gets some armor. A bit of supporting here from Jason from behind. EPC should be okay as the power slide back on in on top of Johanna. Heal starting to miss as Thrall falls in the bottom lane. Even with Seed Giants there, Imperius able to return the favor back at mid as Mongoose falling low. Vala trying to get the pressure in with that spread build of her uh, grenade launch. What's, what's her W called? It's called multi-shot. Obviously. Mongoose still leading the way for Regen Blue as we're deadlocked on XP once again. One kill apiece. Imperius now trying to deal with Vala. She's out of mana, but she has plenty of auto attacks in this hatred build. Turn in trying to be started, perhaps, here by Johanna. Not, oh, I was going to say, might not have Iron Skin, but actually did there. Grendel safe behind the wall as Thrall helping Vala out in the bottom. They're trying to siege this down. One of the turrets already gone. Uh, the Siege giant still here as Zeratul starting to make the rotation. Can he get on top of Vala? Not going to pull the Singularity Spike trigger there is Fox. Back at mid-16 stacks on Echo Corruption is Melkor and his Gul'dan. Draining away on ETC. Mongu starting to walk towards the top where Regen Blue is missing a bit of soak on a few of these minions just barely out of range. They're still looking around this egg spawner trying to see if anyone's turning in for a few more nice red. So far, it's no gems in the bank for them. Vala starting it up for the first time. Ana is here. Does get the interrupt with the grenade. Mongu's now stepping in on ETC. And three heroes for Regen Blue here. Four for three, four nice red. So not a great fight as Zeratul starting to make his rotation up. Sees Ariel, gets a few cleave damages in on her. Now warping back in on top of Rise, blinking back out. Oh, there's the first kill. Second kill, actually, for Regen Blue, but a big one on Johanna. A lot of gems hit the ground. I think Vala might have picked up a couple of them. Stam up holding 34 is a big number for a squishy target like her to have. But Regen Blue not able to get the big money gems on the ground as of yet. Both teams almost with enough gems for a turn in. Melkor under pressure. Fox blinking in right back out. With Mongoose being as low as he is on health, he's going to have to use the well tap, get a little bit of healing dart action from Jazon. We're back around this egg spawner now. Uh, I think it's curious, maybe turning some in bottom. Yeah, that's enough. Regen Blue going to get the first web weavers in the game as Mongoose on one of his favorite heroes helps power slide through Vala. That's 34 gems in the ground now. Johanna stepping in without the iron skin just expired. Danebo under pressure. A lot of trouble for Johanna. Barely getting a heal off from Ariel will survive. But some of those gems were not recovered. And with Regen Blue summoning down these web weavers, they're in a really great spot. I think almost have enough gems on hand for a back to back turn in. I can count at least. 49 there, now 50. Let's see if we can show you here. Okay, yeah, there's the count. Put them up on your screen. So we'll be close after this Web Weaver phase. The Regen Blue has enough for that back to back turn, and they have level 10 talents. Those are up on your screen. It's stage dive from EPC, who's power sliding in, finds the knockback of face belt, but Johanna, once again, gonna be okay. Web Weaver also gonna be destroyed before the Web Blast. Yes, they saved that Web Blast. Regen Blue's got to start retreating, checking in at mid. This one's still alive as Vala takes a big Singularity Spike. Now the 35 health. Stamop's going to live, though. Parking back to base to get restored. And overall, it's just a couple of walls for Regen Blue, but we got to keep an eye on the gem counts. I know they were close, and they might actually have enough. There's Larson heading back to base. Monk is trying to hold the vent. Under a little bit of pressure. 
as Reborn Knight's Red showing up here, winning a whip there. Both teams on level 10 as Reign of Vengeance, Crystal Aegis, Blessed Shield, Sundering, and Horrify. The Reborn Knight's Red. Mongoose now under pressure does not have a mosh pit. He can face up, can power slide. Those are still in the kit. The rest of his team working on a bruiser camp. Here's a Larson and Fox comboing on that. It's down. Imperius holding 15 gems, keeping an eye on Thrall as the rest of the team keeping an eye on this turn in. Mongoose nearby and sees it. Still no channels are done. There's the BP, hits four. Will there be a stage dive? Yes, there will. Hits four members. Eye of Horus from Jason on the backside of the fight is ripping through some health bars, also helping restore the health bars of Regen Blue, and they get a double kill out of it. Some gems hit the ground. Mongoose gonna survive with 50% health. Thrall's even gonna fall down in the bottom. Grendel finds that kill. Six to one for Regen Blue now as it's two apiece for Sylvanas and Imperius, one for Ana and Zeratul, and this will be back-to-back turn it for Regen Blue. Bruiser Camp still pushing at mid. And they're starting to get comfortable on the map, a one-level lead. Starting to think about getting some structures down. They see Gul'dan behind this wall holding 30 gems. He's the target they'd like to kill as well, but with Melkor scooting back to the rest of his team and the safety that they provide, he'll be just fine with those 30 gems for now as Regen Blue's gonna push his top lane. Webweaver spawning right behind them. Jason without mana, so maybe having to be careful here is Regen Blue. We'll see how long they want to stay, but I'd imagine it's this fort and back. That's exactly what it looks like is going on. Zeratul staying in here deep, getting the last gem. And should be able to stealth into that boss pit to save him. Down bottom, Imperius with the Webweaver will get the second fort down for Regen Blue. It's just his one hanging out at mid, still standing. And with vision of where these enemy heroes are, I wonder if they want to try going for it with this minion wave pushing in. Looks like they are stacking up nearby. Johanna now making this rotation in, but might be too late. And that will be the third outer fort destroyed by Regen Blue. Imperius in a weird spot. Spears through Vala, now trying to scoot away. Should be able to get out. BP still available once again. Available, I should say, for Zeratul. The Fox not finding it there. And Regen Blue, only nine gems away. Nine gems away from having another turn, and they're up level 13. They're invading this camp smartly. Mongoose on this front line, along with Zeratul. There's the BP on the two. Stage dive coming out again. That one's gonna miss, though. The BP was not canceled in time, so not the full value. Regen Blue might pay for it, but I have Horus on the backside by Jason, healing all of his teammates and throwing some damage, enough to kill the Vala. Here comes the camp steal attempt now. And Regen Blue just a few gems away from having enough for this turn and they can get them at mid and bot? Fox looking for a few around the bot side. The rest of the team just gonna rotate to mid. I think maybe just drop the gems off you have so you don't risk them. Get the last few here. And set yourself up for a third turn in in a row. You don't see that often here on Tomb of the Spider Queen, but Regen Blue playing pretty well so far. They're coming off their first match of the season a 2-0 victory over running with turtles reborn knights red uh dropping their first set two games to one to devil kegs a former almost legends team just renaming and that is going to be the third turn in a row for regen blue vp still 23 seconds away from fox not going to have that tool here in this fight. Stage dive is available. As well as the Eye of Horus from Mongoose. Power slide in there onto Joanna. She has Iron Skin once again. Webweaver hits the ground and now ready to press in onto this top keep. The other two lanes left unattended for now as the Black Arrow is coming out from Sylvanas. Big Web Blast hits onto a few targets with Gul'dan and Vala. As the first to fall will be Johanna, now without a tank as Reborn Knight's Red. Jason with the Eye of Horus trying to snipe away at Golden, not able to finish him off. VP back online for Fox. This could start getting scary as the mid keep getting pressure. Top keep 
Gonna fall here to reach out blue. No contest. And bottom keep. The wall's down. That web weaver still at 50% health. Also pushing in. Thrall's about to respond. As Regen Blue starting to back up, where do they want to go? They have level 16 talents. Just waiting on Imperius to lock in his decision. And Regen Blue going directly for the boss. They have this BP as a way to help protect against this. But look at how much siege pressure, single target damage they have to this boss. They still have vision down in the bottom lane. Thrall was just showing, Vala was just showing, so they feel safe. Will be a free boss in an open lane for Regen Blue. But will there be a counter turn in down bottom? Stock, Stam up, Rise, all channeling. Danebow showing up as well. They need all these gems in order to get it, or do they? No, they don't. They had a little extra. But without level 16, they're gonna have to defend against a boss. And Regen Blue might be trying to end it right here, right now. Thrall and Vala still in the bottom lane having to heart. Regen Blue's already here. Gul'dan trying to throw out the corruption, trying to get this boss down, but it's approaching the core, and it's on the core. Webweaver in the face of Regen Blue might be enough to scare them back. And actually, it will. Webweaver, or excuse me, Webweaver top, not going to be an issue. Health already low, so rotation to mid, and a rotation to bot is about to come out. Might be enough to save all these structures. Zeratul making the longest of the rotations for Regen Blue. Yeah, this bot for it also going to survive up top. Reborn Knight's Red maybe trying to sneak in a fourth wall. But no, they're just going to play defense around the egg spawner. Oh my, here comes the engage Noana looking for a flesh shield. It's two. But Mongoose and Grendel still sturdy. I have Forest going to help get some health bars back up as Mongoose is looking to re-engage this. Whipped back by Ariel, but there's the VP. It's one target. Stage dive. Gets canceled in the, uh, the Aegis that time. Pretty good. Saving Melkor for a moment. Horrify late as Goldan's going to fall. A lot of gems hit the ground as well. I think about 30 plus there. And now Dambo under pressure has Iron Skin in the power slide through it. Will Dambo still fall? Yes, he will. Not enough hope in the bank for Ariel that time as Regen Blue pushing in on the second keep of the game on the back of these black arrows from Sylvanas. Larson locking it down and with all five heroes here, this keep should be falling. 30 seconds till Johanna's ready to get going on the map again. Regen Blue get the keep down and don't want to press their luck. Instead, want to check out the Bruiser camp which is available nearby. They hop right on in. And I don't think... Reborn Knight's Red wants to come in here. Fox is going to take a look at him outside the safety of the rest of his team. He goes right back inside. Bruiser Cam stolen away for the second time by Regen Blue. Making the rotation to the bot lane. Looking for a few more gems. They, I guess, need 20, what, 30 more gems. Quite a few. Reborn Knight's Red need quite a few as well about to get their 20th gem. Siege camp was taken down bottom by Regen Blue, now working on their own bruiser camp. Keeping this map pushing the opposite direction up against their opponents and continuing to work on their level 20 talents and the XP needed to get there. Just about to round level 19. There it is for Regen Blue. Make sure you guys are aware of what our talents to this point are. But we're getting close to those storm talents and once level 20 is here, it's really tough to come back and hold on, especially when you're down by two levels. And this possession at mid from Sylvanas taking away those uh, ranged guys, but that means no spider butts for Regen Blue. Maybe not the smartest decision. Excuse me, smartest decision when you're trying to get gems. There is the VP. Here comes the stage dive. Canceled properly that time. The silence comes out as well from Sylvanas. I have Forest in the backside once again from Jason finding kills. Kills, kills, they get three in that one. A triple kill for Regen Blue as they're trying to end the game. They have a bruiser camp pushing in. GG's in chat from Reborn Knights Red. And that should be game number one. Handed on over to Regen Blue, who are looking unstoppable thus far this season. Haven't dropped a map and will take game number one here on Tomb of the Spider Queen.
So let's take a look at the match summary brought to you by Nexus Gaming Series 13 to 1 in favor of Regen Blue. Looking solid to start off the night here on Tomb of the Spider Queen. Uh, I, I honestly got to give MVP to Jason. I of Horus got tremendous value, almost doubled the healing output of Ariel, didn't die in the match, and was in on almost every single kill. Congratulations to Jason, our MVP of game number one. Also, really well played by Larson, led in Siege, led in hero damage, and uh, Fox on setting up those VPs to set up the kills. Well done by Regen Blue. Let's take a look at the talent screen before we take our first break of the evening. Want to say once again, thank you very much for being here. I'm your host, Murda. You're watching Reborn Knights Red versus Regen Blue, a Division B West Week 2 matchup here in NGS Season 7. We'll be back in just a moment. Thanks for hanging in there with us.
welcome back to twitch.tv slash MurdaRG. I'm your host, Murda. About to head on into game number two between Reborn Knights Red and Regen Blue. We're waiting on one more player in our lobby. I think it's Jason. Uh, taking an extra moment getting here. We'll see how much longer it takes. I don't know. Haven't heard what the holdup is yet. Maybe had to do a system restart. Here he is, Jason, arriving just in time. Diablo, you're supposed to be holding this today. There we go. Scoot it over a bit so you can read it. There you go. NGS. Boom. Did I do it? Yeah, Diablo. Nice. Sorry, sick nephew. Okay. All right. Dealing with some personal stuff there. All good. I'm going to throw out my ready in chat. And we're going to head on in. Game number two, it's going to be Infernal Shrines. Uh, this one was selected by Reborn Knights Red, so first to pick once again will be Regen Blue. Once again, our map bands were Braxis and Sky Temple by Reborn Knights Red. Towers of Doom and Battlefield of Eternity by Regen Blue. I think we're going in just a moment. Waiting to see if Ryze wants to get this one started. There we go. Game number two, Infernal Shrines. Regen Blue currently on top. one nothing over Reborn Knights Red. But game number two, anything could happen. Infernal Shrines, a bit different of a map than Tomb of the Spider Queen. Objectives strongly favored regen blue in game number one just one uh, Ineffective web weaver spawn by reborn knights red there on tomb of the spider queen as Maiev can be banned out first for the second game in a row by regen blue <clears throat> Back on over to reborn knights red who banned out a Chen and an Alarak to start off game number one See if they want to resume bans on those or if they have something else in mind five seconds for their first ban here <clears throat> and once again, they're going to stick with the Chen Ban. Back on over to Mongoose. Game 1, it was a Kael'thas Ban. Makes sense here as well on Infernal Shrines. Wouldn't be surprised if we see the same thing. 13 seconds remain. Uh, maybe even a better map here for Kael'thas, but two very strong rotation-heavy maps where Kael'thas can sh really shine. But instead, it'll be a ban on Thrall. So options and decisions to be made now for Reborn Knights Red. They leave open that Sylvanas who was chosen to start off the draft by Regen Blue. They don't ban it here. Ana was also selected early. Uh, and then plenty of tanks yet to be banned. None as of yet. So a few different ways Mongoose and Regen Blue can go after this. We'll see what Ryze has in mind. I'm going to ban out the Zeratul, and this might be the smartest pick because Fox uh, was able to do a lot with him in game number one. Here on Infernal Shrines, a bit different. See if maybe he has to hop on a different hero, something else in his repertoire. But we are looking at the first hero pick for Regen Blue on the clock. Ten seconds remaining for Mongoose and Co., and they want the Johanna. This is crazy. You ask me, or you ask Mongoose last season... He's first picking a Johanna, and he's going to give you that, like, grumble, grumble, I don't want to. But now you see him taking a Johanna, and I wonder if there's a change of heart. Or maybe just a, a stubborn pick into a hero he doesn't like to play, which leaves the Sylvanas to be taken on the other side here for Reborn Knights Red. And they find Diablo as well for Danebow and Sylvan D. How will Regen Blue respond? to seeing one of their favorite heroes selected. Seeing Diablo picked up on a map that he's very successful on. Will it be support? Will we see Ana again? No, this time Anduin for Jason And Fox is finding his Samuro before the second ban phase. I thought maybe Fox was going to want to go into this. Didn't want to jinx it. It's exactly what he does. He finds Samuro. He finds it before any more bands are able to come out to potentially take it away. 
And now Reborn Knights Red have to think about how they want to handle it. The Samuro is going to be all around the map, warping all over the place, using those clones. It's going to be tough to keep up with where he's at, keep up with the split push, maybe having to take some counter siege of their own. Rainer, the final ban for Reborn Knights Red. I wonder if maybe it's even just like an Abathur ban here. Maybe get rid of the Kael'thas again, still available. Five seconds for regen blue. And it's going to be Alex Straza. I don't know. Um, I guess Dragon Creed would give them issue. Uh, really tough for Samuro to fight into it. Anduin struggles into it as well. Um, they don't have any way to shut down the Abundance heals with a grenade like they had in game number one. So Stukov selected and Kael'thas still available for Melkor. They grab him as well. Do you want to say Melkor making the off roster sub tonight? Playing for Ninja. Uh, not sure why Ninja wasn't able to make it tonight, but Melkor... Making that sub in. Played pretty well in game number one on the Gul'dan. This time I'm going to switch up mages. Find the Kael'thas, which wasn't available on Tomb of the Spider Queen. A highly contested hero on Infernal Shrines. And we'll have opportunity to get a lot of bomb spread onto uh, Samuro clones. But we'll have to do it up against Imperius and Jaina as the last two picks here for Regen Blue. One more selection for Reborn Knights Red. They need a solo laner, something to handle Imperius. Uh, they had the Thrall in game number one, which has been banned out. So they need to find something else here for stock. I wonder if they go a bit sturdier, something like a Leo. Maybe a Blaze? No, it's Ragnaros. So they want to have a Lava Wave, perhaps. I don't imagine the Sulfurous Smash. I just haven't been seeing it as much, but it could work. Uh, they do have Gravity Laps, they do have Apox if they want, Virulent Reaction later on for Stukov. So if you're a Smash, could find value. But it might be a bit harder, it might not be the XP help they need up against Samuro. I think Lava Wave will be a great response to Samuro. We'll find out here, game number two about to start. Let me know in chat once again, who are you here voting for? Who are you rooting for? Hashtag RBKR for Reborn Knights Red or hashtag RGB. Throw your votes out in chat right now. Need to hear from you. Only heard from Arrow in game one. He voted for Regen Blue. I'm going to guess he keeps his vote, his allegiance on the side of Regen. But you never know. He could be here trolling. I wouldn't hold that out. Game number two has loaded. Let's introduce our team on the left-hand side. We got Reborn Knights Red, Stamop on Sylvanas, Dangbo playing Diablo, Stock on Ragnaros, Melkor subbing in, playing the Kael'thas, and Rise on Stukov. Ladies and gentlemen, make some noise for Reborn Knights Red. Over on the other side, your game one winners. We got the Captain Mongoose playing Johanna. Larson on Jaina, Jason playing Anduin, Fox on his Samuro, oh, and in the bottom lane right now it's Grendel on Imperius for the second game in a row. Ladies and gentlemen, make some noise for Regen Blue. Level one's up on your screen. So check out where our heroes are. It's four v four in the bot. Ragnaros up top already. Imperius making his way as well to join Ragnarok, uh, Ragnarok, top lane. Still no level one selection for Jaina. Would assume fingers of frost. But didn't pick it, so that first globe not gonna count towards Larson's quest, and decides to go into Winter's Reach. Okay, maybe that was the idea the whole time. I figured maybe on a rotation heavy map like this, you will wanna go for the globe quest. You'd already have two. On your way to the third, but instead going for the Q build. It's Samuro up top with Imperius up against Sylvanas and Ragnaros. Grendel taking a lot of damage. Walking through that meteor. 85 health. Grendel surviving. Fox here working on Ragnaros, and that's first blood of the game. Samuro left wide open. Sylvanas not able to do enough to protect the Ragnaros. With that, Regen Blue going to take a small lead as they continue this rotation between mid and bot and finding that bot wave. No one currently at mid for either side as Regen Blue is starting to work on the siege camp. 
Maybe a bit aggressive, but they do have their tank with them. 3v3 here in the bottom lane. Blizzard onto the camp as Diablo's gonna charge in. Mongoose here trying to keep Dambo back. But Jaina and Anduin, not enough. They don't feel safe enough here, so they're gonna give up this Impaler camp on the bottom side. Uh, successful takeaway. My Reborn Knight's red as they're trying to stay in this lane. Mongoose staying in as well. Mongoose going in to hold your ground. So you're gonna have more iron skins. Definitely helps against Diablo. This will be the second camp of the game for Melkor and Rise after that camp steal on the bottom side. Regen Blue still not starting on their own Impaler camp. Speak of the devil, here they go. Jaina Cone of, of Cold as and the Blizzard as here comes Diablo. Vox showing up on Samuro. Now this is going to be a 4v4. Clone's still not available yet. And Sam's taking a lot of damage. Still working on this Sylvanas backside. Going to get on out. Mongoose staying in as long as he can. But with Larson so low. Larson falling. I don't know how Stukov got that. Somehow was able to finish Jaina off. I wish I could see the recap. But that's now one kill apiece for each of these teams. Stukov with one. Samuro with one. We're heading into our first shrine of the game. Eight more seconds will be mid, and it will be a Mortar Punisher first up to bat. As that is the third camp, uh, second takeaway there by Reborn Knights Red. They have a small XP lead, and they're already here inside the shrine getting to work. Diablo holding the bush. Here's Imperius, finds Diablo, spears on in. Dambo now trying to walk away, getting slowed a bit by Imperius as well. 18 skeletal defenders already secured for Reborn Knights Red. Looks like Regen Blue willing to just give this up. No contest. As they rotate down to the bottom lane, trying to find level 7. Maybe a little bit of damage onto this bottom fort wall. But they're playing from behind. This mid already lost its wall. This Punisher just now completed. About to spawn and without any sort of protection. This mid fort's under a lot of pressure here. We're only three. And three quarters in as I am frozen and right back in. Sorry about that, fam. Punisher apparently leaked in. Mongo is still okay. Fire coming out from the sky as Keltos throws a flame strike to the backside. Here comes that second lead by the Punisher. Mongo is under that pressure, but still okay. This port does fall as we predicted. Reborn Knights Red are trying to push it even further now onto this keep. This keep wall under a lot of pressure. Punisher is still healthy, doesn't make it quite over the wall. One of the turrets is down, second turret still surviving. Jaina trying to get all the cues out, and finally, that Punisher falls, but not before going through a fort and a keep wall. A really great, wonderful objective there by Reborn Knights Red, now trying to invade on yet another camp. Mongu stepping in on Johanna, gonna need Imperius to turn around, and here comes Grendel. Gonna help out Regen Blue. Big Spear onto three. Dambo still holding the point, but Mongoose first to fall in the fight. Didn't have any supporting left. Jay's out a little low on mana, and Regen Blue have to leave empty handed yet again. And that is the fourth camp, the third steal by Reborn Knights Red looking red hot here in game number two. Up two to one and looking successful around the map. So Murrow trying to get in onto that fort. Ragnaros hops right on in, Molten Core. Uh, I'm guessing Rag took a lot of damage. It must have been the only reason he hops into this Molten Core. No, he's full health. So I don't know what that was. Fox still pressuring in, sees Reborn Knights Red on yet another Impaler camp, but nothing Samuro can do. And this mercenary pressure continues, continues here as the Black Knights, uh, Black Arrows, Black Knights, sorry. Black arrows are onto this bottom fort wall. Here comes the silence from Stukov, making sure no one from Regen Blue can come on through. Damn up continuing as Diablo charging in on Mongoose. There's a great blizzard by Larson. Getting a bit of damage out onto Sylvanas and Diablo. But they're just keeping this three-man rotation, relying a lot on the Samuro to be elsewhere around the map. Keeping Imperius split up top against Ragnaros, where I will say in these lanes, Regen Blue is able to be winning them right now, but they're kind of losing the rotation. Uh, it's it's just not working out yet. They haven't been able to get any camps, which is uh, not helping at all. Here's another Impaler camp mid. 
once again for Reborn Knight's Red. Fox, once again under pressure from that Kel boss, has to just throw clones out and get away. Level 10 now is for both sides and Falling Sword? Falling Sword for Johanna? Not sure about this one. Not sure at all about this one. Water Elemental, Armament, of course she got Illusion Master from Samuro and Light Bomb from The other side it swipes Phoenix, Wailing Arrow, Lightning Breath, and Lava Wave. Which, Lava Wave has to be the pick here for Ragnaros. They need some way to keep up in XP as this game continues and heroes start to group up. So Murrow's going to be split out more and more. Now having that Illusion Master makes his job that much easier. Right now you see him split out at mid. Also bring a clone up here to the top to help his team if he wants to show up. Lava Wave will be mid trying to work on that Impaler Gant that he picked up. And here comes our next fight, 11 to 11, getting close on XP. Regen Blue starting to catch up. Good silence there from Scoop Top as the Water Elemental dropped as well. Light Bomb now on top of Diablo, but Dango not taking nearly enough damage. Pops a Lightning Breath and says, Come at me, bro. Follow up damage now from Kel'Thas. We're gonna find the kill on Imperius, and the rest of Regen Blue has to scatter on back to their fort. Empty handed once again here on Infernal Shrines. Setting up inside the point once again. Reborn Knights right in here with Sylvanas. They got the Kael'thas. Plenty of shrines here. As Diablo and Scoop God are going to push the wave in just a little bit. Finding a bit more XP on their way to level 13. Ragnaros split out looking for a bit more. Reach up Blue's going to have to give it up. Uncontested yet again. Still looking for XP to get themselves back in this game. They're behind half a level after the kills. 3 to 1. The kill count so far in the favor of RBKR. 1 for Stukov, Kelfos, and Diablo. Uh, Mike output still a little low. Gonna raise it yet again. Uh, hopefully I can get that squared away. I've raised it once again. Hopefully that is now settled in. Punisher's top. And no one's pushing in. No black arrows this time. Instead, making the longer rotation to the bottom. They want to split pressure here. Fox has been working on this in pillar camp, but maybe having to start backing out. Going to come in with one of his clones. His other clones staying on this in pillar camp. They're not giving up. No mercy. Camp will be taken. Punisher cleared up top, but fort down bottom. Fort down top. All three outer forts now destroyed in favor of Reborn Knights Red. As they have themselves a level 13 to 12 advantage. Trying to rotate onto Fox. Do they see him? Haunting Wave does find him, but Samuro quickly back. No one's finding him here, are they? Oh, almost comes out of the bush and reveals himself to Sylvanas. Okay, Fox is like, yeah, I'm not going anywhere. I'm good. Still in trouble though. Blinks away a little bit. Hops back in his clone. 400 health. Light bomb engaged. And there's the falling sword follow up. But it's Samuro first to fall. Johanna not able to finish off Sylvanas as Jaina falls on the backside. Great Phoenix there from Kael'thas. And now a rough spot for Regen Blue being surrounded. Mongoose in big trouble. He falls. Grendel and Jason might get out. But Grendel still under pressure from Sylvanas. Does apply a slow and do it on this top side. Should be able to get out. Ragnaros showing up. Will there be a flip? No, but Lava Wave coming in. Not a lot of minions to kill with that. Grendel survives. But Black Arrow's used by Sylvanas on this deep wall, and that's going to be another wall down. Two turrets as well. And still five seconds till Johanna respawns. They're going to try to press in just a little bit, or will they? No, they're starting to leave as here comes Imperius. Excuse me, some Murrow on the flank. I thought that was Imperius. Fox just pressuring what he can before getting back to his squad. Keep saved. But they are down two levels now. And are almost down talent. So Mongoose starting to think about playing aggressive. All the heroics almost back online. Just a moment for armaments. And a lot of stuff still down and on cooldown for Reborn Knights Red. They're not willing to engage as that's the first camp of the entire game as far as I... Oh no, second by Regen Blue, but they just haven't been successful on these camps at all. Now making a play on their own. 
I guess willing to take a fight in case it happens. They still need one before level 16 is here. But I don't know if they find it now. Samuro also working on a bruiser camp. The other side of the map, there's a bruiser camp. And Mangu says, hey, we got to get here. They're not 16. We have to be aggressive in this moment. And they see no one from Reborn Knights Red is here. So they're just going to hold a bush for a moment. Maybe someone comes in. It's going to be Diablo. Imperius leading it off. Does he have a follow-up stun? Yes, he does. There's a spear. Falling sword on top with the blizzard. A lot of damage to Diablo. Follow-up light bomb. But Diablo's still sturdy. Damo on full souls. Not going anywhere. Phoenix in response means a good counterattack. And a kill onto Imperius for Reborn Knights Red. Fighting another. Now 7-1 to one in their favor. Lava Wave up top to shut down this push for Samuro. Barely surviving, by the way. And with Imperius down, they can't contest the third objective in a row. All of these have gone over to Reborn Knights Red. Regen Blue hasn't even walked in the pit yet. Still no 16. Samuro's looking for it. Trying to find turrets up top as Fox, but stock is here. Ready to defend. One of the strongest defenders in the game is Ragnaros. Uh, with that multiple four, you saw him save that bottom fort earlier. Uh, still sitting very low. As being held at 39 skeletal defenders and just picked up. Timed out with this Impaler camp by Reborn Knights Red. They're trying to get the first keep of the game. And this is very likely to be just that. Still no level 16 talents for Regen Blue. Looks like they want to try to take a fight behind this Punisher. Before they get their talents, try to surprise Reborn Knights Red. But can they find an avenue to do so? So far, no one scouted out this bush yet. As the Punisher is approaching their keep. This will get the keep down. Uh, Regen Blue conceding it with this positioning. Samuro with the clone coming in the front side. Draws out the leap. And now from the back side with this light bomb engaged. Going to be late because a falling sword came out. So a counter synergy sends up the lightning rep from Diablo. Fox is down. Larson's down. Grendel gets the living bomb on him. He's down. Triple kill as Jason's about to fall. Make it a... Uh, no, not a quad kill. Jason still surviving. But this Punisher on the keep. They find another kill. That one on to Johanna with Mongoose dead. This will be GG. A quick one in favor of Reborn Knights Red. Will send us to game number three. Just Jason on the map. That's Anduin. Not enough to save the core. GG. Well done by Reborn Knights Red. They're going to send us to game number three. Let's check out this match summary brought to you by Nexus Gaming Series. 11 to 1 is the kill count in favor of Reborn Knights Red. Solid game number 2 after a rocky start in game number 1. Big win there. 11 to 1. Really shutting them down. 3 level lead for RBKR. Let's take a look at this talent screen before we go to our second break of the night. Once again, I want to say thank you to everyone out there. These follows coming in. Uh, the bits we saw earlier, thank you so much for those. Once again, if you're watching on YouTube, make sure you hit that subscribe button. Hit the like button as well on the video to draw a little bit more traffic my way. Really appreciate all the help you give to me on all these videos and all these streams you do throughout the season. If you're watching live right now on Twitch, thank you so much for your patience. And I'm going to ask you for just a bit more as we take our second break and set up game number three.
Welcome back in. Game number three between Reborn Knights Red and Regen Blue is about to commence. And I'm here in lobby with all ten of our players. It's been quite the set so far with Regen Blue taking game number one over on Tomb of the Spider Queen. Game number two being handed over to Reborn Knights Red on Infernal Shrines. We're heading into a game number three. After bans on Braxis, Sky Temple, Towers of Doom, and Battlefield of Eternity... We're going to head on into Volskaya Foundry for this last one. Uh, looks like Reborn Knights Red is going to need just one more moment. Player dropped out. Once again, thanks for hanging out. Everyone here in Twitch chat. <clears throat> Maybe you're on YouTube. Make sure you hit that follow button. Make sure you hit subscribe over on YouTube. Appreciate all those coming in. I uh, just got to get... Uh, Melkor back in here. He's the sub tonight for Reborn Knights Red. Waiting to hear from Melkor. No one knows. Hopefully not gone from the night. Uh, perhaps a disconnect? <clears throat> We'll hang for a bit. Uh, looks like this might be a bit of a longer delay. So I want to encourage you to make sure you're checking out any other NGS matches going on right now. I think Ziltoid just finished up. Um, and if I look over at the schedule for tonight, there was one other one. I might actually be the last match still going. Probably am. Hmm... Maybe DB Smiley still going. I can check his out. Murda, can you cast and play at the same time? <laughs> hee hee. You get a hee hee out of me. I like that one. Uh, there is still a game. Actually, no, it just ended. Looks like Deviled Kegs knocked off Roll One Esports 2 to 1 over on DB Smiley's channel. Deviled Kegs, uh, B Train's team. Recently renamed, uh, coming over from Almost Legends, uh, rebranding as Deviled Kegs, and you can tell why. Be trained, a big fan of Chen, big fan of those kegs. Uh, just checking in with our captains. I think they're agreeing on some sort of time limit. <clears throat> uh, about 15 minutes here for Melkor. Uh, I'm, uh, I think I'm going to put us to a break. Um, I'll check in with you guys every couple minutes or so. Uh, but you don't want to sit here and just stare at me. It's not fun for me. It's probably not fun for you. Oh, wait. Yeah, a few of you guys are chatting. Okay. Shingam here. Uh, saying maybe wasn't a fan of that comp of Regen Blues in game number two. Did see comments, and maybe I missed this by Monkus earlier saying, uh, the piercing key wasn't picked up at level four by Jaina on Tomb of the Spider Queen. Maybe that had something to do with the lack of damage coming out from Regen Blue. Weren't able to deal with the Diablo. They threw out everything they had at him, but just not enough to get through that full health bar Diablo had, um... A lot of souls and just never was able to fall. <clears throat> so, uh, captains have agreed to a 1220 Eastern cutoff on this. We're going to wait to see if Melkor can return within the next uh, 12 or 13 minutes or so. Uh, we're just going to be hanging here for a bit. So, hopefully you guys are strapped in. Maybe you got a snack nearby. I want to say thanks for the follow to Darth Cherrywood. Missed that one during the break. But if you're still here, thank you so much for that follow. And yeah, oddly enough, Melkor, before disconnecting, sent me a friend request. I'm not sure why. Um, did he think it was just two games and then just dipped out? I don't know. 
Shingam Sama saying, at Murda RG. Hi, Murda. How is casting going, BB? How'd you like the comp? I liked the comp before the match started. I guess I didn't consider how do they deal with Diablo. Um, the lack of blessed shield from Johanna was curious. Uh, game one, I thought was curious too. The lack of the mosh pit from ETC and twice a night, I'd say we've seen Mongoose take questionable choices on his heroics playing tank for regen blue. Here's Melkor, joins the game in time. Looks like we will have a game number three tonight. Don't you guys worry. There's still more Heroes of the Storm action. Still more NGS to be had tonight. Poor Diablo doesn't want to stay in frame for me. We get him? There we go. There we go, Diablo. All ten players are in our lobby. I'm going to throw out my ready check. Hoping Regen Blue can pull this out, says Darth Cherrywood. Really likes seeing Samuro played. Okay. So maybe a little more support for Regen Blue showing up. They might need it here as all the momentum has shifted over to Reborn Knight's Red. They took that game number two over on Infernal Shrines. Here we go, Volskaya Foundry, our final map of the night. Thank you for your patience. I know these players appreciate you being here. I certainly appreciate you being here as well. First to ban will be Mongoose and Co. Regen Blue on the clock. 30 seconds and they don't need it. Right away with a Stukov ban who gave them issues on Infernal Shrines. Over to Reborn Knights. A bit shorter of a timer here for their first ban, but they've already seen Stukov taken away. Five seconds remain for this ban and do they stick with their game plan? Uh, the Chen. No, they want the Zeratul this time. Zeratul was also taken away in game number two. Definitely helped them uh, not have to worry about Fox coming in. And Keltos, who was banned in game one by Regen Blue, was left open. Or excuse me, banned out in game number one, was left open in game number two. And banned for the second time here in game number three. Wisely so. Because Melkor came in on the sub roll and he was destroying there on that Kel'thas on Infernal Shrines. Here we go, final ban of the top half. It belongs to Reborn Knights Red. And they're going to take away Chen for the third game in a row. Still don't want to deal with that panda deck. Sylvanas, she's won each of our first two maps. First with Regen Blue in game number one. Then with Reborn Knights Red in game number two. She's going to be handed back over to Regen Blue here in game number three. Larson on the hero. And now Reborn Knights Red have to figure out what is the secret sauce to dealing with the Sylvanas. They're going to try Taronda for Rise. And Blaze in the solo lane for stock. Back on over to Regen Blue. Who have put priority on ETC tonight. Still available. Maybe not wanting to have to deal with Johanna again. There's the Ana they had in game number one. This was our MVP for Jason there. On Tomb of the Spider Queen. Do we see ETC as well for Mongoose? Yes we do. A cow pick for Regen Blue. So far this is looking very much like that game number one draft. They won't be able to get the Zeratul, though. That's already been banned out. And with Reborn Knights Red still having one ban, do they go back to what was picked in game number one? Uh, the only other hero remaining was that Imperius. He's been played in both of these first two games. Do they want to ban him out or leave him available once again? No, they're going to get rid of the Jaina. Maybe a bit more issue. I believe Jaina was played there in game number two by Larson, who's already shown to be playing a Sylvanas. So, might not have been the Jaina pick there. 10 seconds left. Regen Blue taking away Diablo. This is the hero that gave them all the issues in game number two. Won't have to see him here on Volskaya Foundry. Now back on over to Reborn Knights Red. And they have to make 3-4 picks into Sylvanas, Aina, Ana, <laughs> Aina, Ana, and ETC. They go with Alarak and Leeming. A lot of damage now. This Discord Strike... 
uh, after a telekinesis from Alarak can be so destructive. Leeming as well, one kill could mean the entire team goes down. Four seconds left for the last two picks. Regen Blue have to make a decision here. They're gonna find a Medi for Fox and Arthas in the solo lane for Grendel to deal with that blaze. Final selection still available. It's a Nubrak. Boy, as this tank started to fall down out of the meta. He's the last picked hero on Volskaya Foundry where a month ago that would have been unheard of. So Twitch chat, you voted twice tonight. I gotta ask you one last time. Who are you here rooting for? Hashtag RBKR or hashtag RGB. Vote for Reborn Knights Red or Regen Blue now. Twitch chat, time for you to participate. If you're over on YouTube, don't think you can't participate through. Throw your votes out in the comment section. Love to hear from you and who you were here watching for, even if it's not live with us right now on Twitch. Game one to Regen Blue, game two to Reborn Knights Red. All leading into this game number three on Volskaya Foundry. Winner go home without the two points. Each team leaving with at least one here. But they want those two. We're going to find out who gets it. Volskaya Foundry about to start. We got Stamop up front on the Alarak. Rise playing Taronda. Danebo on a Nubrak. Stock playing the Blaze and the sub Melkor on Leeming. Make some noise for Reborn Knights Red. Over on the right hand side, we got the Captain Mongoose on ETC, Jason playing Ana, Larson on Sylvanas. Up in the sky, it's Fox on Medivh, and in the solo lane, it's Grendel on Arthas. Make some noise for Three Gen Blue. And I want to say thank you for that Ray DB Smiley just getting done with his match, sending six of you viewers over. Welcome, we're in game number three just starting and I'm hitting the wrong buttons uh, But game number three just now starting between Reborn Knights Red and Regen Blue Game one going to Regen Blue over on uh, Tomb of the Spider Queen Game two going to Reborn Knights Red on Infernal Shrines Here we are, it's Volskaya Foundry Grenade build started up by Ana, this is the one that got a little bit of a nerf in the latest patch, but still probably the way to go if you're an Ana player at home. Aggressive portal into a bush. They're not going to take it. Instead, just making the rotation to the top. Fox still seeking his arcane rift stack. Taking damage from Alarak and a lot more follow-up as well, but will survive. Back to safety and up in the sky from the deep. Down bottom, Arthas versus Blaze. Not too much to speak of either direction so far between these two. Uh, Arthas trying to do his best to throw out his slows. Keep himself healed up against his blaze. Sylvanas working on this camp first. That's Larson using black arrows, making sure he's not taking too much damage as he gets rid of the defender now onto that turret. Medivh trying to rain the skies. That's Fox dropping down onto the mid wave. Rise here playing Taronda. Keeping the soak up at mid for Reborn Knights Red as they get the remainder of these minions down up top. That's going to be a full wave miss by Regen Blue. Uh, not a good spot, but they are going to push on forward to this enemy turret camp. Dainbo walking right past a few of Regen Blue's members. And now Burrow charging in the Nubrek. Power slide the opposite direction into a Lunar Blaze. Uh, that Lunar Flare connecting from Rise and means Mongoose has to scoot on out. Turret will be handed over uncontested. Reborn Knights Red. But Regen Blue using this opportunity, getting onto the support camp. Is there enough space here created by Mongoose? It's scouted out there by Taronda, and here comes Danebo. Stepping in aggressively on a new bracket and face melted back. Now Burrow charging in there in time with the power slide from ETC. Maybe rough now for a new break. Danebo falling very low, but a great silence and double discord strike by Stamop. Stolen away by. Reborn Knights ramp at the... Oh, it was picked up. Melkor finally grabbing it there. As the power slide in once again by Mongoose. Exposed. Gets a force of will from Medivh. Will be able to survive, but now Larson under pressure. Gets a portal. Can he use it? Yes, he can. Regen Blue surviving, but not after losing away that support camp. This is exactly what was going on in game number two. The Reborn Knights Red were playing aggressive on the Mercenaries. Stealing them away. Now Medivh under pressure. Likely to fall. Lunar Flare to finish it. And stacks are reset at the three minute mark for Medivh. Here comes the first control point of the game. 
Control point A already in control. It's going to be Reborn Knight's Red. Yeah, it looks like a similar build that we yeah, saw in game number bad. one. Oh, sorry. Complete lack of map control by Murda. Missed that kill in the bottom lane. It's Arthas who falls. A full level lead and still no contest on control point A. This is likely going to be a full channel. Uh, approaching the 60% mark. Arthas just respawning. They're about to be down level 7 talents. Regen Blue in a rough spot here. See if they want to play it aggressive or just concede this over. 78 now, 80%. Channel up as Mongoose is walking in. Arthas making it here late. 90% on the channel now as the new Brack starting to back on out. They have plenty of time to find their level 7s and re-engage this. This looks like exactly what they're going to do. Clearing up a camp in the top lane. Giving away a few channel points to regen blue. Larson, Fox, and Jazon going to find their next turret. They had to use one earlier trying to protect against that support camp. Portal down to the bottom for Fox trying to get this little bit of soak. Still seeking level 7 is regen blue, but they're going to have to take this fight without it. Talents up on your screen to see where these heroes are thinking. As it's still just a moment away for regen blue from getting level 7. They gotta take this fight. ETC staying in here as long as he can. Anubrak as well. Arthas on this front line. But the backside, Alarak finding a double discord strike on Larson and Jason. And that's gonna be handed on over now to Reborn Knights Red. Turret drop, finding a kill on Madif. Resetting those stacks for the second time. This protector hits the ground. And it belongs to Reborn Knights Red. Protector just gonna bypass mid, walking on up to top minigun out. Big Q win by the uh, excuse me by the uh, Walker. What do you call the Walker now? The gunner and the pilot, I guess. They also get through the well. That's huge. Now working on the fort. Fifty percent health remaining on the protector. Not a ton of counter siege here by Regem Blue. A similar mistake they were making in game two, just leaving three here for the clear. Giving up a lot of structural damage once again. Still holding on to this turret's Larson, but trying to hold it as long as he can. He will not be able to save the fort. It falls. And just one level away. Reborn Knight's red. Charging in on Arthas. Grendel trying to get out. Has a portal at his feet. Doesn't need to use it. It's still there if he wants it. Five members of Regen Blue trying to protect this mid fort as reborn knights red are starting to think about the support camp they still have a lead but no level 10 mongoose knows this he wants to take a fight while they can portal in but still just four members oh excuse me coming out of the skies but need five members here now for regen blue turret drop starting to rip through blaze's health bar but he popped his pyromania and was able to withstand a lot of it larson under pressure portal can he use it no sylvanas falls and that's level 10 now picked up by Reborn Knights Red, and they're going to steal away that support camp. They still hold on to that item with uh, Lehman. Fox in the back trying to keep his arcane rip stacks, finally. Playing it a bit safer now at 14. Up in the sky. Going to drop on in at mid here, where Mongu is still trying to protect his mid fort. Ana being sent up top for a little bit of soak. Reborn Knights Red with their... Talent to your advantage as heroics are enough to move on into this fortification camp. Steal away a turret from Regen Blue. But even the sky, and there's nothing he can say about it. Easily picked up by Reborn Knight's Red. Now just Grendel here in the bottom lane. The rest of his squad up top taking a siege camp. Getting some XP from this wave as well as Jason. There's going to be another turret for Reborn Knight's Red. Still available on their side of the map. And put it in Alarak's hands. Now three items in their control. Control point B will be next up in the top lane. Of course, Sylvanas up there right now with the siege camp. Clearing up this wave as quickly as possible. But the rotation about to be here from Alarak. He shows up in the top lane plenty of time. Along with the rest of his squad, it's just Blaze split out down bottom against Arthas, which has been the matchup all game. Level 10s for both teams now. Mosh Pit, Wailing Arrow, Army of the Dead. Likely Leyline Seal, but it could be Polybomb for Medivh. And then Ana, who is so effective in game one with Aya Porus, will we see that again out of Jason. 
Wave of Force, Starfall, Counter-Strike, Cocoon, and Combustion on the other side for Reborn Knight's Red. Here comes a Burrow Engage on top of Mongoose, still getting stunned out by that Jet Propulsion, but Pearl's there and Force of Will as well. Mongoose is still 100% health. No heroics exchanged yet. Polybomb was the pick from Medivh and Eye of Horus from Ana once again. Ana gonna look for a little bit more magic. Will it be enough to swing the tides again here? Game number three gonna need it. 30 seconds on the support camp. Siege camp available for Reborn Knights Red. They're grabbing it here ahead of control point B. Three seconds until it spawns. And it's regen blue first to set up, but their opponents are so close to 13, and Ubrak gonna take the fight anyway. Bro charge again, getting slept by Ana and Dambo. Plenty of time to scoot on out. Portal was used there by Medivh. Didn't really need it, as regen blue gonna hold on to this point. Didn't get the channel started yet. But they finally will with Jason on this backside. Larson under pressure. Sylvan is very low, getting Lunar Flares there. Larson now warping away with the Haunting Wave. Inside the Cocoon's Arthas, will there be a stun on to him? Portal drops, Silence, and he's able to get out. Great job by Medivh, keeping Arthas safe. Backside, I have Horus only clicking in onto a new Barak, who still holds on to that turret. There's also a Biotic Emitter in the hands of Melkor. Reborn Knight's Red looking really good now. Up those level 13 talents as well. Grendel still staying in here for Regen Blue. Ma uh, Mongoose also on the front side. Dealing with some of these orbs from Leeming, which are starting to chunk through. Starting to hurt a little bit. Force Armor selected a level 1, not Power Hungry for Leeming. Regen Blue trying to find XP, but they're not going to get it here. In this top lane, now sending Arthas to mid. Sylvanas down to the fortification camp. And they're gonna contest, or excuse me, concede over without contest. This second protector of the game already losing their top fort during the first objective push. Not willing to move on in without Army of the Dead, without Eye of Horus. Didn't get to see the mosh pit there in that last skirmish. But the score is still 4-0 in favor of Reborn Knights Red. They now have their second objective of the game on the map. Where are they going to walk it to? Mid, sitting without a wall. Bot is the priority typically here for this second protector. They're going to get a little bit of damage in onto that sidewall. Waste a laser beam and some minigun shots. but Nonetheless, going to make it down here to the bottom. Use the remaining shots out of that minigun. Grendel here in defense on Arthas. Ana here as well. Here comes Larson and Mongoose on Sylvanas and ETC. Burrow charge in from Gamebow. Getting a little bit of support from this pilot and gunner. They're trying to work down this fort. Here comes Sylvanas and ETC pressuring in with Arthas. Two man howling blast as Jason showing up on Ana. Here's Medivh in the sky as well, dropping down his Fox. 31 stacks, just nine away in his Arcane Rift. Medivh cannot afford to fall at this point. Really needs to finish off that quest. It's going to leave this at 34 stacks, fort down, and a two-level lead opened up here by Reborn Knight's Red. A lot of you guys were calling for the nano boost on the team. Not going to be the play here. It is I, of course, to be selected. And is that the right choice? Here comes Regen Blue. Great silence, and just like that, a Nubrax down. Before level 16, a camp steal is able to happen by Regen Blue. They get the Biotic Emitter. Possibly the swing they needed. Now just a one level differential. They're going to be able to soak around this map as well. Ana being sent down bottom, but Jason should not be by himself. Maybe trying to get it onto that camp, but not there in time. Portal was dropped, but just a little bit too late. Two stacks away on Arcane Rift is Medivh. Let's keep an eye on Reborn Knights Red. They're working on a siege camp here. Li Ming, Blaze, Taronda. Partnering up as this wave in the top lane. Onto a keep wall. Getting some damage in on those turrets as it's catapult. <clears throat> Excuse me. So Sylvanas having to show up. Clearing that up. With level 16 just around the corner for Reborn Knights Red. Regen Blue going to have to play safe for just a few moments. Control point C. Should be called pretty soon. Not too far away. Turret was started up, but down the talent here. Regen Blue backing out. Another aggressive steal here. Well done by Reborn Knights Red. They get their third turret here. You see Rise, Stamop, and Dangbo each holding on to a turret. 
Your own spawning in a minute and 30 seconds might be available uh, mid-objective. I think the objective is going to be called out here before that's available. Uh, but should be able to hop in there later on during the objective to see if they want to make an aggressive play there later on. Up top, Sylvanas and ETC desperately seeking out level 16 for Regen Blue. As Medivh, Arthas, and Ana hanging around mid trying to protect this remaining outer fort. The only one still standing. It might just be one more minion wave until level 16 is achieved for Regen Blue. They do have a siege camp in the top lane, which is helping counter push that out. But they don't quite have that 16. They got to be careful here at mid. Medivh being burrow charged on. Has that Biotic Emitter avoiding the Lunar Flare. Dambo taking a lot in response. They used the Wailing Arrow and Eye of Horus. And I don't think they're going to get any kills out of this. Here's the Discord Strike. Now Alarak under pressure as Counter Strike comes out. Tries to put it on the Larson but ends up falling. Alarak down. Make it two as Anubrak falls. Traded out for the Arthas. Turrets on both sides. Fox is low with the Biotic Emitter in hand. Won't have to use it. Jet Propulsion misses. And it's another successful fight for Regem Blue. Winning that 2-1, to one, only dropping their Arthas. They kill a Nubrak and Alarak. Also get some of those turrets to hit the ground. I think all of them did. No items now in the hands of Reborn Knights Red. That was huge for Regem Blue. Are they still? Yeah, they're still holding on to the Biotic Emitter on Medivh. So item control in their favor. They're on the point first. Or are they? Mongoose going to leave it. Moving now on to this turret. They want to get this before Alarak and the Nubrak respawn. But Sylvanas going to have to show up just revealed through a minion wave with Larson. Medivh's in the sky still dealing with up top. And Ana's on the point for regen blue. Will they get this turret in time? Blaze steals it. Great job by Stock and Mongoose. Maybe a little tilted. Under pressure. ETC's going to pay for that one. Ana from distance with the Eye of Horus. And a good portal. Fox getting Mongoose out of there. But now being pulled back and on that conveyor belt. Mongoose might not get out. Being slow. Here comes the Nubrak face belt. ETC still trying to survive. But look at that. Burrow charge in. An infail follow up. Another portal. Not going to be enough. ETC falls. Arthas low as well. 44 seconds until ETC is back. And that's exactly the pick Reborn Knights Red needed. Mongoose out just a little bit too far. That power slide after the steal. Just, uh, I know he wants it back. A little greedy on it. Now maybe greedy again on another turn. Here comes Danebo once again. Stealing away another camp for Reborn Knights Red. They've been doing it all game and during game number two. Wow. Two turrets that maybe should have belonged to Regen Blue are quickly in the hands of Reborn Knights Red. And just like that, they're on the channel. Starting on their third consecutive objective here on Volskaya Foundry. Medivh still holding on to a Biotic Emitter. Another one just picked up by Regen Blue. 30% cents the channel here on Control Point C. For Reborn Knights Red, who are trying to get their third protector of the game. Medivh in the sky, revealing exactly where everyone's at. Here comes Regen Blue, just back from base. They have the talents they want. They're at level 17, almost level 18. They're going to be here in time now contesting the point at 80%. Not quite locked off as getting back on the point to Nubrak and Alarak. Holding it, trying to push it all the way to 99. And they'll do just that. Here's Aya Forest. First turret on the ground as well as the Cancun into Arthas. Here's a great force of will onto ETC. But Mongoose taking too much damage right now. Looking for this Mosh Pit. But still not able to find it. That Polybomb is just so good. Mongoose surviving inside the Biotic Emitter. Now using a portal just trying to sidestep that Starfall. One kill already out of the Sylvanas as heroes are low on both sides. But it's Reborn Knights Red getting the better exchange here. Mongoose likely to fall. Here comes Alarak. Only one telekinesis. Might not need it. Force of Will is great. There's the telekinesis. There's the Discord Strike. ETC falls. Third protector in a row for Reborn Knights Red. Trying to close it out here. Almost 18 minutes in on Volskaya. Pushing in onto this bottom keep. Here comes some Beatles trying to shut down these towers by a new break. Dainbow sitting at about 33% health, but not enough damage here from Ana, Arthas, and Medivh to shut this down. They really need their Sylvanas back up. They need the ETC to help set this front line, this keep 
likely gonna fall 25 seconds until Mongoose is back on the map. A Nubrak pearl charging in on Medivh Fox under trouble. But Arthas able to save the day, help with him out is Grendel. Keep down. Protector moving onto the core. Still 10 seconds for ETC. Regen Blue gonna try to make a defense with Sylvanas showing up. 10 seconds, the Wailing Arrow. There's the Eye of Horus trying to shoot through all these heroes. 80% on the core. Combustion coming out, but the Polymark's pretty good shutting that one down. 20% on the core. The Protector's still alive. 50% Starfall's been thrown, and that's gonna be it. G, G. The reverse sweep coming out. From Reborn Knights Red, they take the set two to one over Regen Blue. And let's take a look at the match summary brought to you by Nexus Gaming Series. Thank you so much for being here tonight. That was a fun one, a great comeback after losing game number one by Reborn Knights Red. They're able to secure the two one win, grabbing two points in the standings. Uh, and I don't know what that does for Regen Blue. I think that drops them out of first place. Uh, but they still pick up one point, so not looking horrible. Uh, but maybe kicking themselves after dropping game two and dropping game three of what could have been another domination victory or at least two points here in the standings for them. Let's take a look at our talent screen before we try to find an interview. I'm going to start reaching on out to uh, the captain here for Reborn Knight Red. Uh, Rise. Uh, this might be difficult. Alright, let's see if we can find them here. Apparently a lot of people have the name Rise. Uh, Reborn. Knights Red. There you are, Risen Guard. Message. Interview. NGS Lobby. Danebo2158. Uh, okay. Well, I'm sitting in the lobby. We'll see if anyone joins me. So far, nothing, chat. And once again... Oh, here we go. We do have someone joining us. Danebo coming in from Reborn Knights Red. What a set. You lose game number one, you come back in games two and three. How is Reborn Knights Red feeling right now? And I don't hear you at all. Can you hear me? Interesting. Uh, you hear me, I don't hear you. Why don't I hear you? Are you muted? You're not muted. I'm muted here. I'm not muted here. Uh, let me test. Okay. Looks like it might be me. Hold on one second. Let me restart Discord. Da -da -da -da. Technical difficulties here. It was working earlier. It didn't change anything. And then it, you know, stops working. Go figure. Um... Close Discord. Open Discord. Hello? Can you hear me? Ah, I got you now. All right. Perfect. Perfect. Joined here in chat by Danebo. Uh, yeah, I was saying... Game number one, rough, but games two and three, nice wins by Reborn Knights Red. You get the reverse sweep. How are you guys feeling right now? Oh, we're feeling pretty good. You know, we had a dub, and then he had to switch over to tethering on his phone because there was a thunderstorm, and in spite of that, we're happy we got the win. Yeah, Melkor coming in, doing a fantastic job in the sub tonight for Ninja. Um, tell me a bit about the strategy going in, playing with that sub. Anything you guys had to change up or to just work out that... Uh, he fills in on that mage roll tonight. Yeah, it worked out. It took me a little bit to warm up to the tank roll. I had previously played that within the team, and I had switched to Assassin. So I think partially game one was me getting warmed up to being not an insane Assassin <laughs> trying to go in for the really intense plays. 
Uh, yeah, but I mean, it, it looks strong, especially in game number two on the Diablo, where you were absolutely unkillable. How indestructible did you feel on uh, Infernal Shrines? And was there anything that really was in your way? Because it felt to me like they had zero answers for you. Yeah, I mean, I am level 113 with Diablo. I have played him quite a bit. I just, mechanically, it's kind of like, uh, you know, mind without mind. I've just played him so much, I don't even really have to think. <laughs> Absolutely, um, yeah. yeah, that's essentially where it's at. I mean, the biggest point for me was that there really was no amount of damage with the abilities and heroes chosen by Regen Blue to get through that health bar. I think it was probably the number one tank you could have had in that spot, and it worked out really well. But then game number two, we switch on over to uh, a late-picked Anubarak, uh, the last hero selected in the draft. And tell me a bit about how you feel Anubarak's faring right now in this meta, slowly falling down and down and down and uh, didn't draw any bans and uh, that was a really late pick. Do you think this is gonna be the new way we look at Anubarak? Um, I think so. I think you also have to take into account that Anubarak is really punishing for small mechanical positioning mistakes. So maybe in this division in, in a much higher tier, he might you know, fall off in the meta a bit more, but you can still punish those tiny positioning mistakes, and there's just not a lot of room for error, so you can still be really threatening. Game three starts looking close a bit. Uh, late game there, around uh, that final cash in spot. It seems like you guys are starting to lose a few heroes uh, just as Regen Blue's about to hit level 16. What was the final comms about uh, to recollect your focus and able to close out that game number three? Well, it was mostly like, we've controlled camps and most of the map. We've gotten rid of bottom. They don't have tap there. We're fine. <laughs> and you mentioned camps, and I, I should note, I talked about it during the cast, but all throughout game number two, especially early, you guys were stealing away camps on Infernal Shrines. And then game number three, you get right back on it. You stole away a biotic emitter. You stole away a couple turrets. Uh, you even helped defend against uh, Mongoose trying to steal one of your own turrets and then found a kill after chasing them down. But my point is a lot of focus on these camps and taking those advantageous level up fights, the talent tier up fights. Uh, is this part of the focus and game plan of Reborn Knights Red or just so happen to work out that way tonight? Um, I think it it's not usually part of our game plan. I think having me on tank, I was a little more aggressive with calls and... Um... It just allowed us to work from that position. I mean, I mean, honestly, it was that. And then major shout outs to Stock with that bottom steal with the blaze where they still were able to take it, but he was able to snag up the turret. And unfortunately, <laughs> they were kind of, I feel like that, it would definitely throw my game off. It's like, well, wait, what? What just happened? And then we were able to chase down the ETC because he was yeah. so far positioned from his teammates. I mean, those are just the, the micro decisions, those microsecond things that really make a difference. And, and I feel because I've been on the other end of those. Yeah, and just like you're saying, you guys ended up winning all those small exchanges and they started to slowly and slowly add up to an XP lead and ultimately a lot of objectives in game number two and game number three, which led to that victory. Uh, before we go, Dambo, of course, I got to give you some time for some shout outs. Uh, represent Reborn Knights Red. I know you guys have a lot to say. Oh, yeah. Shout outs to Jonesy, our org lead. Shout outs to Rise for taking a break from his uh, busy work schedule and just the rest of my teammates. And uh, once again, shout out to Melkor for filling in. It worked out really well. Well, I got to say once again, congratulations. Reborn Knights Red taking the 2 1 victory tonight over Regen Blue. Dane both, thank you so much for joining me for the interview. Yeah, thank you for casting, man. I really appreciate it. Not a problem at all. Until next time, man. Appreciate it, and I'll see you next time. Yeah, I'll see you later in the season. All right, Twitch chat. We made it to the end of the road. Two matches in the books tonight. First, it was Lion Speed versus Team Happy Cloud, and Lion Speed took the 2-0. Next up was Reborn Knights Red taking the 2-1 over Regen Blue. I'll be back tomorrow night. Let me hop on over this calendar, because I want to make sure I tell you what we got coming on. I've already scheduled my week, and I think... I think it's a regen match. I could be mistaken, though. Uh, yes, it'll be Regen Ghost against Rewind at 9.30 p.m. Eastern here on twitch.tv slash murderrg. Did we get a second one? I don't think we did. But there could be room to pick up a second match later on. 
Um, we'll stay tuned uh, tomorrow night. We'll see how I'm feeling. Might end up getting a second match. But for tonight, you guys have been fantastic. You were hanging out here you the entire time. Uh, Stocked again. Played that solo lane really well tonight for Reborn Knights Red. Thank you for that follow. Jonesy, the org lead. Heard a lot of exciting things happening for you guys. Congratulations on that. And congratulations on the 2 on victory tonight over my own org, Regen. Well played. Reborn Knights Red go home on top. And until next time, I'm Murda. You can find me over on Twitter, at MurdaRG. Of course, here on Twitch, at MurdaRG. And YouTube, search for MurdaRG. Hit that follow button or subscribe or whatever. Any way you can follow or help out goes a long way. And I desperately appreciate all the help you can give. Until next time, tomorrow night, 9.30 p.m. Eastern here for Regen Ghost and Rewind. I'm Murda, and I will see you in the Nexus.